and welcome back to Before Time Again. I'm so excited about today's video because we're starting a series. And it's called, uh, It's Not What You Think. And we are gonna be putting common Bible verses back in context. Um, this is really something that I've noticed, especially lately, just how easily people take Bible verses out of context and how twisted scripture gets so easily. In 1 Thessalonians, it says, test all things. So that's what we're gonna be doing with these Bible verses that are taken out of context and they're twisted and they're used for people's agendas. They're used for people's, um, what they want it to say or what they want it to mean. And so um, we're gonna be testing all things and we are going to be putting them back in context and we're gonna be reading them in context and studying them and what they actually mean. So um, let's get right into it. And we're going to start with the first uh, Bible verse, which is Psalm 46.5. This Bible verse, just FYI, this video is probably going to be a little ranty because <laughs> this is one of my biggest pet peeves is when people take scripture out of context. And this one is so taken out of context. And it's so easy to tell that it's taken out of context when you read the, the chapter that it just it drives me insane. Anyways, so Psalm 46, 5, it says, God is within her she will not fail. And um, people use this Bible verse as it's kind of like talking about me, like, oh, I'm a girl. God is within me. I will not fail. And this is a really Pinterestable verse. This is, this is the type of verse that you see on selfies. Girls will be like, God is within her. She will not fail. Like that, this is the verse. <laughs> this is the prime go-to for uh, girls. This is God is within her. She will not fail. And people use this because it sounds good, because it sounds right. It sounds, oh, God is within her. That sounds so nice. That makes me feel so good. Like, that is, that's the reason why, essentially, why girls use this on, on things. And it's not just teenagers. It is adults. I've seen it in, like, uh, babies' nurseries or whatever. And it's a girl. And they'll put, God is within her. She will not fail. Like, <sighs> stop. What are you doing? Um, so, we're going to get right into the context, which... I'll get my Bible here. Um, so we're going to read Psalm 46. We're going to read the whole thing. I love um, John Nix is one of my favorite speakers ever. I love John Nix so much. And he is just so like context, context, context. Context is key. And he says, if you're going to read one verse, read the whole chapter. Because if you read that one verse, it is so easily to twist that and not know what it actually is meant to say if you don't read the whole chapter. So we're going to read the whole chapter. So if you want to gouge your Bible, read it with me. That's cool too. So Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a helper who is always found in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not be afraid, though the earth trembles and the mountains topple into the depths of the seas, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with its turmoil. There is a river. Its streams delight the city of God, the holy dwelling place of the Most High. God is within her. She will not be toppled. God will help her when the morning dawns. Nations rage. Kingdoms topple. The earth melts when he lifts his voice. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come see the works of the Lord. He brings devastation on the earth. He makes wars cease throughout the earth. He shadows bows and cuts spears into pieces. He burns up the chariots. Stop your fighting and know that I am God, exalted among the nations, exalted on the earth. Yahweh of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. So that is the context. That is what we're looking at. That is the chapter. And um, people take this. Oh, it is just, oh, um, no, oh, this is going to be, this is just, it really drives me insane. So we can see from this chapter, context is key because um, if you just hear like, God's within her, she will not be toppled. Like that is, it's so easy to take that out of context and not know what it means. But if we look at verse four, the verse right before that, it says there is a river. It streams to light the city of God, the holy dwelling place of the most high. God is within her, she will not be toppled. So who is her? Her, it is saying in this verse, her is the city of God. Her is the holy dwelling place of the Most High. So we have to understand just kind of some background of Old Testament and what's going on here. So um, this was before Jesus came and salvation was available and the 
gospel was even known. This is before all of that happened, before the Holy Spirit dwelled in us when we accepted Christ as our Savior because Jesus hadn't come. He hadn't died on the cross yet. So we have to understand that this is talking about her is a physical location. Her is where the Spirit of God dwelt because it couldn't dwell in men because our the payment for our sins had not been made yet. So the dwelling of the Almighty was in the temple. It was the Holy of Holies. It was this physical location. So that's who her is. That's who it's talking about when it says the city of God, the dwelling of the Most High. The dwelling of the Most High is in the temple, in the Holy of Holies. That is where God's Spirit dwelt before Jesus came. So we have to understand the background of this before we can determine what it actually means. So it's, it's not talking about her, this isn't about Ruth. This isn't about Esther. This isn't about some girl. This is about the dwelling of Most High. This is about the city of God. So this actually has absolutely nothing to do with a female person. This is a physical location. This is a physical place. So when you think about it, this verse is ridiculously out of context. Like, it makes absolutely no sense why people would put this verse on their uh, new babies, like, wall. That, it makes absolutely no sense. Like, it's stupid selfie verse. Like, and this is, this is prime example, prime example of people taking scripture and using it for their own agenda. Using it for, oh, this feels good. This sounds good. This, this fits what I'm trying to say. We, we shouldn't take scripture and make it fit what we try to say. This, this matters. Context matters. Because when you say God is within her, she will not fail or she will not be toppled. When you're saying that, you're saying she will not fail. Well, you're going to fail because you're a sinner. You are a sinner and you are going to fail. Okay, here's a quick how to not fail 101 with entity. Uh, stop being human. Like that is the only, that is the only way for you to stop failing or uh, be in heaven. Like <laughs> that's it, that's that's all that, you know? And, and so this is ridiculous that people are taking this verse and they're like, God is within her, oh, that's me, shawty. Like it's not you. This, this verse is not about you. This verse is about God and taking it out of context and taking it and using it for your own purpose that is just so, like, what are you doing? Who do you think you are to take God's word when it means one thing and say, oh, it actually, like, it could, it could mean this too. It can't mean that. God is within her. She will not fail. When we think about the context of this was Old Testament, this was before Jesus came. So the Holy Spirit wasn't even dwelling in, in us, in, in people, in Christians. So we think about that. Okay, why would the psalmist even write about this then? Because God didn't dwell in them. He dwelled in a physical place. So it's, it's all messed up. It's all messed up. When we take this verse out of context, this psalm is about God. This psalm is not about us. There is not a verse in the Bible that is about us not failing. It is all about us failing and God remaining faithful. That is what, that is the story of salvation. That is the story of the gospel. That is why Jesus came because we could continually fail, but Jesus is continually faithful and he is continually good to us. And the Bible is not about making yourself feel good. If, if ever you come upon a verse and you're like, oh, this makes me feel good. But the part before that, like, oh, that's that doesn't make me feel good. Like, don't. That's not the Bible is not meant to make you feel good. It was to show you how sinful you are and how holy our God is and how we cannot be in his presence. We cannot be in his presence because we are sinful, because we fail him every single day. That's what the Bible, the Bible came to bring the good news of Jesus Christ, that though we were sinners, though we were far from this perfectly three times holy God, he made a way for us to know him and by his grace through faith we are saved. And this is not of ourselves. It is God's gift. 
and it drives me insane, obviously, how people just take these verses out of context and they use them for their own, their own agenda, their own agenda. Test all things. Even if it's a selfie verse, listen, if you read Psalm 46, well, verse 4, there is a river, it streams the light, a city of God, the holy dwelling place of the Most High. God is within her, she will not be toppled. Well, that just kind of puts to rest everything. Like, it clearly says that her is the city of God, the dwelling place of the Most High. It's not you. It's not you. It's not about you. It's about God. And so, when... <sighs> Context is key. Context is key. And when we take it, things out of context, it just, oh, it messes everything up. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> so, I, and I know there are so many girls who this is their wallpaper, you know, this is just, oh, God is with her, she will not fail. Yes, like, this is your Instagram bio. This is, you journaled it in your journal Bible. You are just all about this verse. Well, let me tell you something. This verse is not what you've been using it for. That's not what it means. And so, just know, know that context matters. And this verse, God is within her, she will not fail. It has meaning and it has purpose, but that purpose is not you. That purpose is not to make you feel good. That purpose is not to have an Instagrammable verse. Um, that's not the purpose of the Bible, to be Instagrammable. And um, that just drives me insane. So I, the reason I'm doing this whole um, study uh, slash rant, um, <laughs> The reason I'm doing all this is because I want girls to understand for themselves because society and cultural Christianity so often tells us context doesn't matter. Like, it's the word of God. You're reading. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's the Bible. Like, it doesn't actually matter what the context is. And context is not key in our society and in cultural Christianity. And so I just want to make girls aware of this, make Christian girls aware of this so they know context does matter. Context matters so much because when you take things out of context, you twist the meaning of it, you twist what, what God has for us and you're making it mean something totally different. So I know this, this, this um, video is kind of long and I'm kind of just going on and on about, it may seem like the same thing, I don't know, but I'm just so convicted by this. And this is such a real problem. Like, I've ranted to my mom and dad about this so much, and I'm just like, pretty sure they're really tired of me talking about it. But um, it's like, oh, uh, it just drives me insane when people post this on their Instagram, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? So, yeah, so that's the reason I'm making this series. So I hope you'll stick with me. I hope you'll um, continue to watch these videos from this series so that you can understand why context matters. You can understand what, what the Bible actually has for us. So um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them in the comments below. And um, I will try and get back with you on if you have any questions. I just want to thank you for sticking around watching this video and uh, hearing me rant. <laughs> See you next time.